doing it now. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, the uh, 5.8 uh, shipped out uh, a couple weeks ago, and I just wanted to highlight some of the new uh, features. I mean, there's more than this, but uh, two big ones are, um, or sorry, three big ones is that there's a new uh, query loop block, which I'll show how that works. And then uh, being able to edit widgets from the using blocks and then this new feature called the pattern directory. So uh, here I've got a page that um, that's actually showing the query loop block in, in action. So I'm going to edit this page so you can see how that works. Um, if I uh, just click on this block, you'll see that it's it uh, united here and um, this was something that Dave and I were talking about. It's a little bit confusing about uh, where how to select the parent that's now it, it used to be you would hover over this block and now it's over on the side but um, I can kind of uh, see where it is. So this new block is called a query loop. And if you've done any WordPress theme development, uh, you're probably familiar with having to uh, do all of this using PHP. Um, and now you're actually able to uh, pretty much build a build a query uh, using the block editor instead. And there's some uh, different uh, features uh, in here, you can uh, filter out categories or tags or um, uh, you can adjust the columns if you want. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of this block and start over from scratch so you can see how this works. So a uh, shortcut for uh, using the block editor if you can uh, hit the uh, forward slash and I'm going to type in Q U and pull up the query loop. And so when you first add the query loop, it's going to give you, um, it's going to show you an interface that kind of shows you what, what this will look like. I've gone ahead and, and added feature images to uh, the, my latest post. That way you could see what it, what it would actually looks like because uh, sometimes right here it will put a, put a placeholder and I don't find that very, um, very helpful when you're trying to put this together. Um, so here you can kind of see it's, it's just showing me, all right, it's got the title, feature image, and, and text. But if I click over here, I can paginate to other examples of what the uh, what could be displayed. So here's here's just a featured image and then the title. Um, here's doesn't show the featured image at all. It looks like it shows the entire uh, text up until the maybe the read more tag. And then here's another is another pattern basically of what it looks like and then uh, yeah here's another one you can also select this grid view but the thing is, is that when i first used this i thought oh that shows the posts in a grid but actually what that does is that just shows you each of these different patterns in a grid oh. um so it's a little it's a little bit uh, uh, confusing but uh say let's let's pick this real simple one here and there's nothing really uh impressive about it right from the beginning but if i open up the list view i can see how this is put together so you've got the the parent block which is the query loop then inside that there's the post template and then it, it's organized by columns and you've got the featured image and uh, or sorry post featured image and then a post title 
Uh, one thing is that on some of these post blocks, they they're they're somewhat limited in, in what uh, what you can do with it. So, for example, the post featured image, all it there's only one setting right now. It's just linked to post. Whereas uh, there's another uh, block that's called like a recent post block that actually gives you a lot more options with the featured image. My guess is that they'll probably roll out some more um, some more options for this down the road. And then for the post title, you can you can make some uh, adjustments. Uh, for example, I've got uh, an H1 up here and an H2. So rather than have this as H2, let's change that to H3 to keep everything uh, hierarchical. And, uh, and hey, then Aaron, nice can I interrupt you? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of, you, you talk about this query loop. Are, are you saying like, is a query loop like I can say, hey, I want to search for a bunch of different posts and have it automatically put them up here? What, what's the purpose of a query loop? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, that's basically uh, wh what it does is that it will allow you to uh, display um, any, you can, you can display like all of your posts or you can narrow it down by a specific category or tag, just like how uh, the other, uh, just like you, know, you would in PHP, it's not uh, the, the PHP template. It's not, you're, you're limited. Uh, for example, you don't have access to the code that you don't know, like, for example, this featured image, I would maybe have that as a background or something. You can't really do that here. Um, but let, let me, um, let and, me. And can the user on the on the front end? Can the user select categories and yeah. then have it display that? Yeah, way? let me let me show you how that how that works. I'm gonna uh, remove this and just kind of start over again. Oops. Okay, so uh, what I'll do here is. I'll open up this one. Okay, so over here on the query loop setting, you can see that you could in, inherit the query from the template. So say, say you're like on an archive page or an author page where it shows all of the posts from a specific author. You can set this up to say, hey, I want you to just inherit whatever the parameters are uh, from that. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're just gonna leave that off for right now. Um, I can change this, for example, I can change the post type instead of it searching uh, for posts, it could search for pages. And so now what's happened is that this is, is pulling in um just the pages this this pattern library of the page i created and notice up here there's this um uh, you can barely see it featured image that's basically a placeholder so i so i could go in here and say hey i want to i want to query like we do smart home stuff i could say i want to look at categories and i want to look at doorbells and it'll only put up stories about doorbells is that the idea yeah yeah, so let me go back to, um, let me switch this back to the post. So you, you can see here, um, now I've just got a bunch of test data, so I'm not sure what categories are gonna come up, but okay, so I'm, I've got one that's called Acaform. So if I select that, what that's gonna do is it's only gonna show uh, posts that are in that category. Cool. And, and what does it default to on the front end? Like the user can say whatever categories they want. What does it start off with? Well, what it started, it starts off with um, just the uh, 
right from it starts off with whatever your default query is so in most cases the it just starts with like the latest post and then moves chronologically backwards so if you if, if we pop this in right away that's that's basically how uh this is this is set up but you can you can configure it though to um to do things a little bit uh differently well i like this because i use something called post group post grid pro right now and it nicely it makes makes nice you know organized looking posts of only the things i want to show and so you're saying i could take my home page i could put this on my home page and say all the latest stories or something from the last month or something like that they would all yeah. pop up in whatever format of these five or six formats you showed us. Yeah. Cool. And um, one thing, uh, one thing though, I, I noticed about this query loop block is that, um, the, for example, this particular pattern, it's showing them in a staggered formation. <laughs> and I know that it's going chronologically in the correct order. I was wondering how how is it doing this because I'm looking here at the settings on the right and I'm not seeing it. Well, there's actually a a button down here called display settings, and this is this is where you can set how many uh, items you actually want to to show, but then mm -hmm. you can also in the, this particular column. You can actually have um, you can have the posts offset. So if I so right now it's I've got it set for zero, but if I wanted to have them staggered, I could have it offset by. Uh, so the the way this is set it set up is that it's going one, two, three for that's the the order that this is uh, configured so for example it, this, let me show you how this would uh, uh, where is it there it is okay so for example if you you know how like you go to a lot of websites they'll have like a the latest post is like really big and then they've got uh, smaller posts after that. So what I can do is I'll, I'll create a, a query loop. I'll just choose this one really quick. And I'm just going to have one item per page. And then I also want to uh, get rid of uh, some of this extra junk. So I'm going to get rid of the separator. Um, let me get rid of the post date and then I'll move the title underneath. Then what I'll do, let me close this. And we'll those are some new blocks for 5.82. Hmm? Those are some new blocks in 5.8. Yeah. One of those, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so then I can have um, oh, come on, where is it? Yeah, that's not what I wanted. That looks hideous. <laughs> um, let me get rid of that. Okay, well, here's a, here's a nice little trick. You can always just, okay, I, I kind of like the way this looks. So let me just duplicate it. And then this particular query loop, I can change it to a grid view um, and then adjust the columns to just be uh, two columns wide. Now, what I, I wish that you could do with this is um, a feature that's in another block called 
uh, latest post. Oh, I don't want to do that. It, what happened there was I, I put a block within the query loop and then it was, it was getting duplicated there. Um, break out of, break out of that. So this is one that just displays the latest posts. You can filter categories and author, but you can't do some of the more uh, refined filtering. And, but the thing I like about this one is that you have a lot more control over uh, the featured image. So you can see, you can change the, um, you can change the dimensions. So for example, if I want to have a, a thumbnail and, you know, have everything centered aligned, um, I can, I've got, I've got a lot more control over the image. Whereas the query block as it is right now, all it gives you is the ability to link, uh, to a, a post. And then if I wanted to add more um, post blocks to this query loop, all I gotta do is just search for post and then it will show me uh, different ones. Like I can add the post tags. And so like in this particular case, it doesn't have any tags, but this one it does. Let me change the image setting. I think this is the one thing that kind of throws me off is that you've got the display settings in one. It's it's is here, but all the other settings are over on the right, and I'm not quite sure why they have it set up like that. But that that is how it is. So just to be clear, so this is so this is, would be a page. So I'm editing a page. Yeah. And then I can add this query block and then bring in a bunch of posts to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can so, set them up in a grid if I want. So, yeah. And, and you can make it so that the person, the user can enter a query on the front end and have it display, like, like Mark said, doorbells. That's awesome. Is that right, That's Aaron? Awesome. Um, I, I haven't experimented with uh, doing it on the front end, but um, it's one of those things like, yeah, it might work. Um, Can we see what it looks like on the front end? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just trying to make it so that. Uh... Dear David, you're saying I could put a search thing in there and say search for doorbells and have it pull it up. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what I want to see. That would be that would be tremendous. <clears throat> I wonder if this slows things down on your web page though. Um I had read in some there had been some tests and that uh the actual uh having things in, in using the Gutenberg editor uh, is significantly reducing uh, the the time that it takes to load a page mm -hmm. because you're not having to say you're not having to load in a bunch of page builder code which is what what you know what um, what you used to kind of have to do you either had, had to code it yourself or get somebody else to code it or have a theme that had it coded in there, or you could use a, a page builder that would give you an interface similar to this, but there would also be a lot of uh, JavaScript and a lot of extra CSS that is likely not necessary. So the nice thing about this is that it it's pretty streamlined. So yeah, um, it's in core. So, you know, yeah so it doesn't look like there's the like a search bar though for the user um well that's just because uh here let me well actually you know what that brings us to the next 
talking point. Before 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 you shift, yeah. I have a, a couple of quick questions. I, I'm on the last version. I haven't upgraded to the new version, and I'm posting stuff to my blog all the time. And I'm constantly frustrated with the inability to do things like superscript and, and subscript and to get color changes in these posts. Is that easier in this new version or is it even, or is it just because I don't know how to do it? Um, let me, here, let me just. Uh, I, I'm not trying to it. take you off course. I was just curious if you knew if that was in there. Uh, so superscript. So Let me just uh, type in something really quick. If you go, um, there it is. if you open this, this <laughs> little inline yeah. editor, you, you can actually yep. uh, select it right there. And then. Uh, it, and, but what about now? What about colors? I see those are both there. What about colors? Okay. Let me, let me uh, get to that really quick. All right. Because I think, yeah, there's a way to then there's adjust text color. the color, too. So you can change it depending on the, the theme that you've got. So for got it. right okay. now, it's giving me kind of these pastel looking colors. But that's because I'm just using a default theme. You right. can change it to oh, you can change it to something else if you want right okay thank you well, yeah. this is in the standard editor what's that this is in the standard editor this yeah, is yeah that's just a par that's just a core paragraph block yeah yeah how do you mean oh, i'm sorry how do you manage responsive uh, responsive formatting within this? Do you know, Eric? If, if I want if I want to have a page that I, it's displaying on desktop and also uh, uh, mobile, mm -hmm. and and uh, it, it's it's got uh, either a grid or whatever here, um, is 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 is, is responsive is responsive formatting um, uh, part of these settings in any way that you know of? Um, the, yes. Uh, okay. So for example, actually, if, when you preview a page, you can actually select either uh, desktop, tablet, or mobile. So for exa example, we can, uh, change this to tablet and you can see that not really anything has changed that much. Uh, the way the, the way most of the WordPress uh, default themes is that it pretty much it just jumps from desktop to mobile. It doesn't really have a tablet view. You know, some some places like I I'm always concerned about tablet view. But uh, if we switch to mobile, you'll see that how the the columns that we used to have are now just stacked on top of each other. Even when you get down uh, to the uh, thumbnails over here. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. You know, if you, Don, are you using any of the um, Gutenberg add ons, like any extra blocks? <laughs> I'm not using anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Because, you know, the, the, there's the, what, what Aaron's showing here is all just the, the core blocks, right? And, uh, you know, they're, they're honestly there. I mean, this is cool. This is this loop back. This loop uh, query is is a, is a neat feature. But, you know, as far as lay, layout and stuff, the, the core blocks tend to be somewhat limited. So if you get almost any of the add ons and my favorite is the cadence blocks. Um, if you get the cadence blocks, you get all kinds of responsive controls. Like if you had a row, uh, if you had a row of four columns. And then you say in tablet mode, I want it to go to two and two. And then in mobile mode, I want it to just all stack. You can totally do that. You know, it's really easy to do. In a lot of those add-ons give you tons of controls. 
even think you can even get controls over like yeah don't display this at all on mobile you know those kind of things so you get um i mean exponentially more controls when you add on one of those i i think most people when they're working in gutenberg are often ha very i don't know that too many people are really designing full sites in just the core gutenberg they're usually using some add-ons yeah does that answer your question yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, um, well, the uh, the next thing I was going to, oh, Dave, did you want to, um, you, you want me to just finish my stuff and then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before, so, you, before you go on, though, I, yeah. it sounds like what Mark was asking about as far as like a user being able to enter doorbells or, or uh, plumbing supplies or whatever into the, into a search is not part of this. Um, not part of the, uh, not, not part of this query loop because, okay. The, the, the reason, what, what will, what, what will, um, what was originally planned for 5.8 was the full site editing. Um, and the query loop was originally designed so that instead of you having to make a PHP template that showed your query, you would actually be able to uh, use uh, the build a, a block based theme instead. So the thing is, is that uh, eventually, I think in the 5.9 release, uh, you will actually be able to to do this. So then, you're, if you're you're searching for, say, a keyword or or something, um, you'll be able to use this this uh, uh, query uh, loop block and to to look to look at that. The thing is, like right now, the way that it's it's set up. Is that, um, let me just make a change really quick and then update it so you can. All right, come on, go to the page. Okay, the, the way that I've got it set right now is that I've got this query loop, but the URL is this right here um it's it's not and if i if i try searching for something it's going to take me off of this page and show me uh the the loop re regarding the um the that that shows me the search results basically so that's why it it's not really going to show you any search results on this page because the URL would end up taking you to another page. So basically, if that makes any sense, it's that, huh? Yeah, if, I, if I got you right, basically in 5.8, you can't have the user enter what the query is. Right. You, it's a predefined query that you make. Yeah, five, well, the, I guess the thing is like with 5.8, the, 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 Search results are um, going to work the same as they they did before. In you know, five point, I'm saying, in other words, yeah. if I do search, it's going to search my website and do its normal thing. But yeah. in 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 WordPress five point eight, when we do a query block, I define the query when I'm building the page, and that's it. It's static. I, the user can't go in there and add new new categories or whatever yeah. else to what they want to look yeah. for. Yeah, this version. You and you think in five nine, it's possible. That they will. It, it, that's what should should happen. Is that in five nine, instead of me building building this query loop on a standalone page, I would actually be building it into the theme template, like the index mm -hmm. page, or the uh, the archive page, or, or the search results page. So then somebody types in. Uh, search for cats or something, um, they'll see 
their search they'll see the results for their query but it will be using the the way that i've i've structured the query block yeah. if i use if i choose to do it that way um not not everything is going to automatically do that so okay. but in theory you should be able to all right thank you you know i uh, um what, what was the plugin that you said you're currently using mark i think it's post grid pro and if i don't have a right to send me a text and i'll look it up as to what it really there's is there's one that i'm pretty sure it's post -grid. I want, there's one that I've been, it's on my radar screen that I haven't really spent time looking at. You know, I, it's just kind of one of these things on my, it's on the back burner right now, but I think at some point I might want to look at it. It's called Post X. Check out Post one. X. It's actually, in, it's actually, they, they talk about it being something for like magazine and newspaper websites and news websites. Mm -hmm. Seems like that would have the ability uh, to, to, to do that kind of thing. And it's gotten well, very like good. With it, David, with PostGrid Pro, you can query. I, you go to our website oh, you can. and you go to you go to in the smart home and you can sit there and type in what category you want and it'll bring it up. It's actually pretty responsive and cool. there's a lot of variations you can make to it. It's a really powerful program, but it's like you're paying for that, right? And so now it's right. going to be built in. That can be nice. Plus, I like about this is that I don't trust PostGrid Pro on my homepage because I think it's slow. And so, although things have been getting so much faster, I guess, lately, but this here now is built into the WordPress. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, I think I'm, I have more native speed, right? Or at least a better shot at better speed. Yeah. And, and so I'm, maybe I could put this on the front page. And I wonder if Post X, th there is a free version and it seems pretty packed with features. I wonder if that's in the free version. So. I yeah. I mean, if, if you go to PostGrid Pro, they, they have a free version that's what we started out with and it's got some limitations but they're they're both pretty good i mean at, at the end why is wordpress doing this they're doing it because people want post grid pro or post grid x right they they want this capability and that's why i think they're designing it in so it's yeah. been a good news yeah cool well thanks aaron so um Really quick, there's a, a couple of other uh, neat features that are now available. Um, one is that you can change the widgets. Um, so down here, I've got you know some some of your standard widgets, got a search bar and recent posts and some archives. Um, it used to they updated the interface to where now it displays more like uh, the way the blocks work, uh, which is a little confusing, I think, at first. Uh, but uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it starts to make sense. So, uh, for example, I can uh, click here and it's like, oh, okay, I see I've got a search block and I've got a the recent post block. Um, and so I can, you know, make, make changes. Uh, all right, what's going on here? There it goes. All right. So I can, I can make changes, um, to this using an interface similar to the block editor. And this is something that has been, um, you know, some people have been, happy some not so happy about it but uh this is kind of how it's working i think one problem one thing i don't like about it is that uh you're editing these blocks and normally when you're using the block editor you've got something on the so on the right side where you can uh configure the options uh here you have to you have to click the the options and then show more settings and that's where mm -hmm. you can um that's where you basically have to go to in order to make changes but what's kind of cool about it is that it visually shows it, i think it, it does a better way visually showing you what the Block, sorry, what the widgets actually look like versus the old way of doing it where 
you just saw the name that oh yeah this is a widget but sometimes you really couldn't tell what what it looked like um unless you were say on the page and and in editing it but that that's basically um how the 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 widgets are, are controlled and some themes um they have it to where you can opt out of this functionality you can keep the classic uh widget editor i think it it's actually available as a plugin i don't know exactly where but it's 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 kind of like the classic editor now it's the you got a classic widget editor if you if you want to just opt out of this feature and keep it the old way that's how the um that's how the widgets uh that's the major update for the widgets and then there's a new thing called the pattern library uh, sorry pattern directory and i'm going to open this up in a new tab and so uh one of the uh one of the you know reasonable concerns about the gutenberg editor is that the blocks kind of seem a little uh generic uh out of the box and sometimes it's just you know it's like yeah i can kind of imagine what this might look like but i don't know if i really want to use that well now what they've got is uh, on the wordpress.org uh, website they've got these patterns that they're kind of like what uh, page builders uh, provide for you like uh, they'll show you a pattern for creating a portfolio site or for creating a, a gallery or for uh, creating like a, an e-commerce call to action or something. So here you can uh, select different ones and, and see, um, see what, you know, what they look like. So let me, let me go to this one right here. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I can see what it looks like on different, uh, di different, um, different devices. And obviously this is, this is not looking very good on, on mobile. So I'm not going to use this. Um, I'm going to go somewhere else but how about this let's take a look at this and see how this looks okay this this looks kind of nice um you know it's pretty simple nothing spectacular all you have to do though is i just click on this button to copy the pattern sorry our dog was digging through the garbage um <laughs> Then I'm going to edit this page and I'm going to hit command V and paste it in place. And there it, it takes that pattern and, and pops it, uh, in place. Now I believe that these patterns all use your, uh, standard, um, WordPress blocks. So if I open up the, list view here i can see how this this pattern is created it you got columns and then the heading and two paragraph blocks and then then a gallery and so that's that's kind of a neat little way where you know if you're looking for ideas or you're just trying to find um you know something that that look nice you can go here uh let's see this this kind of looks a little cool so let me just copy that and then paste it and then there you go it and it brings in uh the, the images as well and uh yeah it's a nice nice little feature i think um, I had read a post off of, on uh, WP Tavern uh, 
they're they're hoping to have actual full-blown pages kind of like what you see in elementor or divi or beaver builder well they'll say hey you want to create a portfolio page uh here here you go this, this will have it in there um so th this pattern uh this pattern directory is not quite there yet but it it is a neat little start it kind of i i like it because um i'm i'm working with trying to make make the things uh, compatible with themes down the road and um, looking at these at the way WordPress is is uh, configuring its standard block that has been very helpful. How, how did you access the the um, pattern library? You just go to uh, wordpress.org slash pattern. I'll put it in the. Uh, oh, okay, so you yeah. don't actually do it from the back end. You don't. No, you don't actually have no. a separate browser window open. There's, yeah, there, they had been. Um, let me try editing. There is something where. I think if you have the Gutenberg plugin, it 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 will pull up some patterns, or actually. Hold on, let me I'll go to browse all. Ah, here it is. But that's different from the the pattern library. Yeah, because right. I think I think these patterns are for the theme itself. Whereas the other so here you can see those uh, query block patterns that we saw before. Yeah, the the way that uh, these these patterns are actually part of the the theme, the theme code. Like if you were to dig into the twenty twenty one uh, theme code, you would actually see the, that these patterns are defined in there. Well. Um, Versus over sounds. here, these are ones that have been submitted. Um, I know it shows uh, WordPress.org everywhere, but uh, I know that they are uh, taking submissions from from other other places. But that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense to me. They've, it looks like what they've done is they've allowed you to paste multiple blocks in, in a certain order. And one happens to be through the theme, but then just like just with your theme but this is kind of like when you click on themes and you're looking for a search for other third-party themes and then you can copy and paste them in it's kind of yeah kind of handy you know, with yeah them, right? and, and the, other, the other question maybe to kind of go along with would be can i create patterns and, and have a library of them somewhere yes if i want to reuse different sites right yeah there's actually um let me let me show you how how you could do that. So I'm just going to start, uh, let's see, start with a group and then I'll add um, an image. Yeah, I'll just pick that and then my hitting and then my text and then click me okay so i've got here a group with a couple of blocks in there so if i select this i can change this into a I can or I can add this to my reusable box mm -hmm. and so now I have it where I can um, I can place it again 
Yes, but in the but in the reusable blocks, if I change the master block, it changes everybody. Whereas it looks like the patterns, I just copy and paste and it says the yeah. one time use. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So so if you so if I there, there's a way to to not have it change everywhere, I think. Do you know, Aaron? Yeah, well, the way that you can do it, I think, is that you ungroup. All right, hang on, let me select. I need to make sure I'm selecting the right yeah, thing I, here. Um, I think if you go to manage reusable blocks, I think it lets you do that. If you want. Oh, OK. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question, because I may be not understanding. You just created a block, and mm -hmm. then you made it reusable. Yeah. By making it reusable and then using the reusable block someplace else, does that create a permanent link back to that stored? I think of that, you saved that reusable block in what I think of as a library. Like an image library, it's a right. reusable block library. Are yep. you saying that if I go back to that library and change that reusable block, it's going to change every instance of that block that I've used elsewhere? Yep. By default, I believe so. And yes. if I Aaron, if I don't so? want that to happen, then I have to change some setting somewhere to avoid that. Yep. Yeah. There. Um... Yeah. I, I, I think there's a way to have to to say, you know, kind of fork this, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. I think there is. Um, try to, try, to, try to manage reusable blocks. Oh, um, here, here, here it is. It's 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 like it's hidden. <laughs> it's a, a okay. If you if you select this. Um, if you select your reusable block, and you need to make sure that you've you've got the um, got it all the way down to the parent level, and you would think that okay, there's got to be a setting somewhere here, but it's actually right here with a very misleading icon that says convert to regular blocks. You click that. And notice on the yep. left how it, it refreshed. Now you've got it to where it it is now separate from that reusable block. I think that's what and, and, so, and then if and then if you wanted to then make make changes to that, it won't affect any anywhere else that, that yeah. occurs. Yeah. And so, you could create a new reusable block out of that new change thing. Yeah. So yeah, up give here it a different at the name. Top, I've got my re. Oh, sorry, up up here at the top, I've got my reusable block, and so if I change like the text alignment, notice how they both get adjusted. But then down here, what's happened is that I've I've I've, I've converted the um, reusable block. What was the option that it said? It I, it's convert to regular blocks. But what's confusing though is that it the icon looks like the group icon. Yeah. And then it doesn't it doesn't say what what it should be. I really think that 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 option should be down here or something a little more clear as to what it what it does because yeah. I I found that accidentally. I knew there was a way to do it, but. So that means that there's a permanent link back to that original instance, unless you explicitly break the link once you've copied it into wherever you want it. Yeah. By there, making it a regular block. Right. Yeah. Yeah, a, a use case for how it's designed might be, suppose you built a little contact form in blocks. And you wanted that at the bottom of all of your pages. You know it, that would be a nice case where you you use that that reusable block over and over again and don't change anything on it. 
But if you wanted to have a block where you're gonna like, well, I'm gonna wanna use different images every time I use this block, then you're probably gonna wanna re, you know, put that reusable block in place, then break the link with the convert to regular blocks. Is that what that thing says up there? Convert to regular blocks. Can you hover over that little misleading icon there, um, Aaron? Yeah. So yeah, right, yeah. Right here, you you com convert it. Now, yeah. what happens if, say, I take my reusable blocks? Oh wait. Okay. I'm going to take my reusable blocks and get rid of them. Now it's like, well, wait a minute, how do I get to those reusable blocks? Uh, you have to, uh, from the block editor, go down here to manage reusable blocks. Right now, it, it's not somewhere that's available, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, this might have changed, but I, I didn't notice it. It's not available from the admin area, which I think it should be. So I dropped a code snippet that'll take care of that. Okay. It, it whittle that whittle that snippet. Oh, that, was oh, that Mark? I see. Okay, I see. It, it'll it'll build you. It'll just throw it onto your menu option so that you've got it right there in the dashboard. Okay. Oh, it'll wh wh where will it put it? Um, on the left. Yeah, on the on the left. Um, uh, in your standard uh, menu there, dashboard and posts and everything. Oh. It'll have a reusable blocks. Yep. Uh, menu item. Oh, neat. yeah. Very cool. So um, from here, I can actually edit that reusable block again if I wanted to. And even though it's gone from that page, I can I'll just create a new new post and then type in my wonderful block and then there it is. And then let, let me go, I, I'll make a change over here in the reusable blocks. Type in my change heading, update that, then go back to the post, poorly written post, and notice how it's been updated. So that's kind of a way where it, it the, it's designed to to actually make reusable content, which is something a lot of uh, uh, things like Elementor or Divi have is where you can you can have reusable template content, uh, say, you know, something like a sign up for my email address. I think uh, Dave mentioned that, um, but you can use it also as a pattern library. There's also a way to actually add library patterns uh, to your theme if you want to. Um, but that does involve uh, some code. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that with the, the template editor coming out in the next uh, major release, that they'll, they'll allow you to just create patterns without having to go through that hassle. I don't, I don't see why they would give you the uh, full site editing capability without that, having the, the library available, but yeah. Cool. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We kind of migrated from patterns into reusable blocks. Now, I definitely get reusable blocks and regular blocks. I just want to go back to the patterns port. If you pull a pattern, they're not like they don't operate like reusable blocks no right they're they're distinct yeah because i most of the, the 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 gutenberg or the block editor that i'm using there's patterns in the editor window on multiple sites so i think they are have limited patterns but i appreciate you showing me in the repository um how you can get all the uh, patterns and then i got one other quick question and it's about the query loop pattern in inserter and then the pattern directory is the pattern inserter also found in the directory or is this or is that in the 
query loop block. It's just a feature within it. You know, so if you're going to say categories or you're going to use tags, that's it. That's found in the query loop block itself. Um, if um, okay, so if I I type in the query loop, um, you know, it's showing me these different patterns right here. Right now, all it's showing me is the query patterns. Okay. Um, let me let me remove this, and then if I browse all the blocks and uh, go over here to patterns, I'm I'm presented with a drop down, and this this is basically all the patterns that have been put into this theme. Um, I think the 2021 theme was the first one to have uh, this capability, uh, but they have added patterns to themes going back uh, several years. I, I I don't know exactly. So, you know, I can see that these are the query uh, loop patterns, but then I've also got headers and and some other other ones. Another thing is that uh, you've also got access to your reusable blocks uh, right here. Uh, on the pattern library, these are patterns that can come from, the, they are, they can be used, in, in theory, they, they should be able to be used on any site versus the ones over here are built, are specific to the 2021 theme. I think that's how that works. I, I, I could be, could be wrong. And unlike, yeah, un, like you said, unlike the uh, reusable blocks, this is something where you just copy it and then you paste it into place. And if you wanted to make a reusable block out of it, you could. Um, like this, for some reason, the can't see the color. Let me clear that out. There we go. So if I wanted to add this to the reusable blocks, I could. Um, I could do that. So. That that ant that help or I'm not sure. No, it did. It did. I was just okay. clarifying. Sorry to take you off track. No, no, that. no. That's all right. All right. So did you have some more things to? No, that's, there, right? that's it for me. That's it for you. If anybody okay. else has any questions. Uh, I have a question, but it's not about any of this that's been presented. Um, I have a uh, need to have, uh, I don't even know how to explain this. I have this uh, little scorecard it's uh, eight multiple choice questions, and each one has four potential answers. And then there's some, some values that are assigned to each answer in each question. And uh, manually, I just do the math. I need to put this into an online delivery system. And it's not page design. There's some actual coding behind it. And I've talked to a couple of developers, and they they either either they're not familiar with tools that already do this kind of thing or there aren't any and i need someone who can help me do it i don't know if there's anybody on this call or in this group that does that kind of stuff or if it even's making sense what i'm talking about are you, are you saying you'd like to have an online quiz yeah well yeah um it's hold on See this? 
Uh, let me hang on Wait, with the screen share. Hang on, I need to. I can show it to you in a, in a larger thing. But basically, there's eight, there's eight questions. I'm sorry, there's eight sets of questions and there's four sets of answers. And they have different values. You can see there's different values here. Okay. And, and there's math involved. And I need to 